Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week we have 10 incredible watches for you guys and girls ranging from some brands you very rarely see including a model you very rarely see to stuff you see quite regularly from me like a Black Bay 58 to some awesome vintage pieces and everything in between at all sorts of price ranges. Um, so as always if you want to skip to a specific watch so you're here just to see the long jeans for example down in the description there is a timestamp that will take you to that exact to watch there's also a link to the website where you can see more photos details additional photos as well under points of mention uh, and you'll be able to see the price if it's still for sale if it is sold you'll be able to see all those details the only thing you won't be able to see is the price um, so yeah that gets all of that out of the way now I do want to say a big thank you again another fantastic week and to be honest August is usually the quietest time of the year and whilst this has certainly been quieter for me, it's actually been a lot better than last year and a lot better than the year before, which might sound surprising to a lot of you because obviously that was COVID and COVID was some of the busiest times we have ever had in this industry. Um, but this year so far, such wood, you know, so far in August has actually been better than last year and more units as well, which is incredible. So thank you guys and girls for that. It really does mean a lot. Now, as always, this video goes live Saturday at 9.30 a.m. For those of you that are new here, we do a drop every single Saturday, occasional Saturday, we don't have a drop, but for the most part, every Saturday, 9.30 a.m., new watches hit the website anywhere between eight and 12. I'm trying to aim for 10 every single week. That's the new goal rather than 12 every single week because it, it, it's only two more, but it does feel like quite a lot more. Um, so yeah, that's currently where we're at. And as of the time, well, when you see this, if you see this Saturday, the following day, Sunday is my daughter's first birthday. So very exciting. So I do apologize if over the weekend, I'm a little slow on replies or answering any phone calls. Obviously I'm gonna be spending time with my daughter and some family members, uh, a nice small little gathering. It's gonna be fun for the weekend. And I won't be in Monday because I'll be traveling, dropping some family back off. And again, spending some more time with my daughter and back in Tuesday. So if you do order a watch over this weekend it won't be shipped until the tuesday so i do apologize for the day delay but it will be worth it once you get your watch on your wrist and again knowing that a father's going to be spending some time with his daughter that's always a good thing okay before we dive into the 10 watches on the table let's take a quick look at what's on wrist i am wearing my personal rolex oyster date precision this is a reference 6694 i absolutely love this watch uh, it's a watch that has a lot of meaning to me and i'm very lucky to have it um, and I wear it as regularly as I can, but I don't want to wear it too much. Obviously an older watch like this, it's a little bit more fragile, but to be honest, I'm not exactly doing anything too demanding working in the office. So I do actually wear it a fair bit. If you're interested in this watch, obviously you can't buy this one, but I do have a 1975 6426 coming for sale. Uh, it'll be a next week's drop if it's not sold by then. And it's the same 34 mil without the date. So if you're interested in this design size and uh, overall look, then uh, that's a good one to get. It's gonna be just, well, it's gonna be a fair chunk under 3,000 pounds, so a great value there. Email me if you are interested. Now, where to begin this week's drop? I think we're gonna have to start with this incredible watch. This is an Ophion or Ophion. Again, I'm probably gonna butcher pronunciations. I often do, so I apologize. I think it's Ophion. Um, Gilt Spectre, limited edition of 40 pieces. This brand has definitely taken the collecting world by storm, rightfully so. They are beautiful, um, but this one specifically seems to have definitely have been the one people wish they got at retail when it first came out back in 2022 uh, so if you missed that now's your opportunity to pick one up so let's take a closer look at this beautiful watch so starting this week off with a incredible watch and i'm going to start off by apologizing for butchering the pronunciation of the brand probably multiple times throughout the course of this little section so ophion i believe is how you pronounce it this is the ophion gilt spectre in a limited edition of 40 pieces which is absolutely incredible as you can see that dial is so dynamic and was incredibly difficult to capture because i was trying to show off the uh, the texture on the gray dial but also the gilt numerals the arabic numerals as you can see which are in the sort of brigade style with their serifs and everything absolutely beautiful the logo beautifully applied Everything about it, incredible, really nice hands as well. And then obviously we come to the case, which is just as spectacular, nice crown as well. And as we flip over, another star of the show. I'm, I'm torn between what's more beautiful, the case, uh, the dial or the movement. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite. So that what you're looking at is a manually wound caliber by MHVJ and Soprod. This is a collaboration movement, a manually wound, and 
exquisitely finished to sort of a modern high standard, which is absolutely fantastic. As I say, manually wound on there as well. Just compared on its original strap, which is in fantastic condition, and the buckles are unsigned, but these are the original buckles. It also comes with a spare strap, it's box and papers, and it's from August 2022. And as I say, limited to just 40 pieces total. The, the sort of overall design is definitely what's made this brand really pop in terms of the collecting community and obviously the movements and the finishing as well, which is absolutely spectacular and something to really sort of behold. So if you're unsure on this one, which I'll be surprised if you're unsure on it, it's one of those where you're not going to find, um, I don't think there's any others for sale anywhere in the world at the moment and I think the last one to come up was quite a while ago as well, so this is a great opportunity to pick one up whilst you can but if you are unsure book an appointment come see it in person uh, but be warned you're probably going to walk away with it on your wrist um, so yeah keep that in mind but let's show it on wrist and tall dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist as you can see perfectly proportioned at 39 mil by 46.5 mil lug to lug only 10.5 mil thick and 20 mil on the lug so you could swap this out for pretty much anything but to be honest this sort of suede strap obviously no surprise i'm gonna love the suede but i think it suits it perfectly and it looks absolutely fantastic. So go check this one out on the website today. From there over to a watch we had recently, but on the rubber strap, we now have it on the bracelet. So if you missed out on the rubber one, here's your chance for a bracelet model. That's the Amiga C Master Coaxial Green Wave Dial, the new ceramic, a brilliant watch. And the bracelet is an absolute tank. And I'd highly recommend if you did go for this watch, picking up a rubber strap from Amiga as well to switch and swap between the two, because it looks incredible on both. Let's take a closer look at this Now one. onto the Amiga Seamaster Professional. This is the modern coaxial 42 mil in green with the green wave dial and green ceramic bezel. Absolutely incredible watch, really striking in its looks as well. And again, the green is very, very bold. It's not a sort of really bright green. It's not a very dark green. It's somewhere in the middle, which often uh, changes with the light, which I think is really nice. And obviously, well, not obviously, but these are ceramic dials as well. So again, you get that really nice shine uh, that you don't get on a lot of watches because often they're matte dials or they're painted or whatever it may be. That's a solid bit of ceramic right there, which just looks incredible and again reacts very differently to most watches uh, i won't bore you with the reference to this one because it's quite a long reference you can head over to the website and see that it does compare on its original bracelet uh, as you can see with its original clasp on the underside you have the dive extension which you can pull out or you have the glide adjust so you can push the button that says push under there and as you push it you can slide out or slide in and you get that adjustment on the fly which is absolutely perfect as we have a look at the case back, you can see it's a open case back displaying the automatic Amiga Calibre 8800 or 8800. That's a coaxial uh, Meta certified movement, very high grade movement from Amiga. For anyone who knows anything about watches, they will know Amiga produced some of the best movements in this price range for, sh for sure. And when it comes to te technology involved, uh, they're probably the most techno advanced of any uh, watchmakers out there to be honest I think a lot of people would, would agree with that this one's from January 2023 it does come with its box and paperwork the watch is in worn condition you will see some scratches and some desk diving marks uh, but again very very fair condition for a watch uh, that's been worn to be honest uh, and again the price is incredible if you did want this fully refinished as in the case and bracelet it can be done personally I always say don't bother get the watch see what you think in person and then if you want it polished, we can always get it polished after. But sometimes I see a lot of people um, polishing a watch that doesn't need polishing before they've seen it. And they could have probably saved an extra, you know, whatever the cost is, but also the time. And also that layer of metal they've now taken off. They could have waited, put their own scratches in and got it polished at a later date. But let's show on wrist and tall dimension. Here we go. On my seven inch wrist, this is a heavy watch. It's a lot heavier than a Rolex Submariner, like a modern Rolex Submariner. This is, it's got a lot of weight to it. Now you definitely know you're wearing it. It's 40. 2 mil by 50 mil lug to lug, 13.5 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. It's endless options, although the Amiga fitted rubber strap is the one I would recommend. It is so comfortable and so perfect. And then you've got the bracelet as well with this one. So go check it out on the website. From today. there, let's go over to a classic with the Tudor Black Bay 58 Black. 
uh, this it's just a cool classic right a lot of people love the model the 54 has been a huge success as well but some people find it a bit too small so for those of you out there that that's the case for you here's your chance with the 58 this one still has a couple of stickers it is in worn condition though uh, it's just the customer before kept the side stickers on so you can take those off if you wish let's take a closer look the tudor black bay 58 tudor's probably best selling watch um, and i think even still with the 54 being a great success i still think given enough time the 58 will still be the best seller and i think black is definitely the best seller of the bunch the blue is fantastic but this has definitely knocked it out of the park and it's probably one of my most sold watches to be honest modern watches um, and rightfully so. This is the reference 79030N and the Black Bay 58 is the 39mm case which obviously we'll get onto size in a little bit. Uh, this model right here is from July 2020 with its box and paperwork paired on its bracelet with all of its links. It does feature its original side stickers as you can see um, but the watch is worn so there are some scratches here and there. There's a scratch on the uh, top of the bracelet right there. Um, but yeah, general wear, some desk diving marks as well. And as we flip it over and open it up, you can see the case back right there. So plain case back as you'd expect on this model. And inside is the in-house automatic Tudor Caliber MT5402, a reliable workhorse movement screw down crown. And as I say, this comes with its box and paperwork from July 2020. So it's still within its five year Tudor warranty, which is always great. The sort of drawing point for a lot of people is one, the size, the faux rivets on the bracer, so it looks like an older, mop, older watch. You also have the gilt on the inside, which is really beautiful on that matte black dial and the matte aluminium, uh, aluminium bezel as well, which again, just makes it look like an older watch. And I think that's where Tudor have really knocked it out of the park with this reference. A lot of people absolutely love it for those reasons. Um, but let's show on wrist and tall dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, very comfortable and very, very good looking. Now, I've been fortunate and I've owned the Black Bay 58 black and blue personally, moved them on just as my collection changed or uh, I needed the money for other things. That's often how these things go as a watch dealer. You have a personal collection, but you have to sell when you have to sell. Uh, so what you're looking at is 39 mil by 47.5 mil look to look, 12 mil thick and 20 mil on the looks so are endless options. Although for me, the Tudor Black Bay 58 on the bracelet is the way to go personally. So go check it out on the website today. From there over to a Zin. I haven't had a Zin in a little while and to get one in like this, I think is pretty cool. This is the Zin 358 50 year anniversary Jubilee edition or Jubileum, uh, however the Germans pronounce it. Again, my apologies for the absolute butchering, um, but a really cool watch with a really nice dial and nice wrist presence as well. Let's take a closer look at this one. Next up, the Zin 358 50 year anniversary Jubilee edition with this striking gray sun burst dial which really plays with the light and makes for this very monochromatic look in a very good way uh, you've got date down there at six o'clock you also have the date 1961 to 2011 indicating the 50 years uh, and obviously the running seconds over at nine o'clock the sub second for 60 minutes and your chronograph hand which starts stops and resets all very nicely as you'd expect you have a screw down crown and it comes paired on its original zin bracelet which comes with the tools to change the links uh, because in typical german fashion they are over engineered so you need to use their tools uh, but it comes with it so changing the links isn't a problem as we flip it over you can see an exhibition case back with a nicely decorated movement some nice blued screws in there and what you're looking at is an automatic zin caliber SZ05. We've got more details of that on the website as well. This one's from November 2011 with its box and paperwork and uh, all the details on the bracelet size are in the description on the website under points I mentioned as well so make sure you give that a read if you are interested. But again priced incredibly well especially when you consider how much just a standard uh, Zin 358 chronograph is on a bracelet and the price we're asking for this special edition version uh, with the awesome grey dial. I think this is a great value proposition for someone looking for this model, uh, whether you're specifically looking for this reference or just this model in general. A very great watch and as always Zin are built like tanks. They feel heavy, they have an incredible finish to them. Uh, I believe they use hardened steel as well so this is a worn watch. You will find some scratches and wear here and there but overall it's very very good. 
um, you can't really go wrong. So let's show this one on wrist and tour dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. It is a big watch, but it wears incredibly well and is very, very comfortable. Uh, it's 42 mil by 48 mil look to look, 15 mil thick. So yes, it's on the thicker side, but again, it wears that thickness well. And you have a domed sapphire crystal, which does add slightly to that thickness. And 21 mil on the look, so slightly awkward, but you have got drilled lug holes to make strap changing nice and easy. And there are plenty of strap options out there from Zindar directly or other manufacturers. So go check out this one on the website today. Let's switch over to an unworn Nevada Grenchen. This isn't just any standard Nevada Grenchen though. This is the Analog Shift Chronomaster Big Eye Yachting Timer limited edition they did recently. This one's fully stickered, unworn and ready to go and be enjoyed. And you can skip yourself on all the taxes that come with buying from the US because obviously it's a US edition. Keep that in mind guys. If you are in the UK and you buy from outside of the UK, um, once it lands in the UK, you'll be paying 20% UK VAT and also handling fees and other charges which can total around 24 to 25% extra on the cost so when I sometimes get people say hey I found this watch over in Japan for two thousand um, pounds I'm like that's great but remember you'll be paying taxes now if you avoid the taxes that's down to you you shouldn't be doing that it's illegal um, but again if you go down that route of course there's nothing I can do with that but for the most part you will be paying UK VAT on top so keep that in mind when looking at other countries for pricing comparisons it's not always the best way to do it let's take a closer look at this Nevada one. Grenchen time now I took the uh, front sticker off to do the photos and also to shoot this video just so you can actually see that dial of why is this a shame because obviously the stickers uh, completely you know make it very difficult to see and that's a very striking dial that's something you definitely want to see so this is a limited edition that they did with analog shift of 100 pieces total um, and it's called the chronomaster big eye yacht timer and as you can see on the sub dial over there you've got those beautiful colors very yachting inspired and that striking second hand if we start that chrono you can see it going round it also features a beautiful really jet white dial and this subtle gray bezel which looks fantastic and really contrasts nicely against the overall look and as we reset that you can see that's nice and accurate inside behind this decorated case back is a manually wound solita uh, caliber sw510 bhb um, and that is the manually wound caliber uh, instead of the automatic which i think is a nice touch obviously a vintage inspired watch this kind of period that this is uh, paying homage to or referencing would have been manually wound calibers rather than automatic chronograph calibers because that came in the late 60s in the first place and was used very sparingly because it was quite expensive at the time this is from june 2023 with its box and paperwork you can see the photo on the website of everything it comes with also comes paired on its original bracelet which is this beads of rice style with a folding clasp as you can see an adjustment on the clasp lots of adjustment to get that perfect fit and it is fully stickered as you can see screw links as well um, so yeah you're getting yourself a pretty much a brand new watch it's not really been worn obviously it's been put on my wrist for the photos and it'll be put on my wrist in a second to show you guys um, but this hasn't been worn the stickers haven't been taken off it's not been taken out uh, or anything like that so let's show on my wrist and talk dimensions and here we go rested on my seven inch wrist as you can see very nice proportions very vintage inspired at 38.5 mil by 46.5 mil look to look 14 mil thick do keep in mind some of that thickness is in that domed crystal as you can see see and 20 mil on the lugs are endless options again with drilled lug holes it seems like brands are starting to go back to these drilled lug holes after sort of phasing them out for a while um, but they seem to be back so go check this one out on the website today from there to a watch i've not had in a little while but i've had a couple of these over the years and they're fantastic really really great i call them the long jeans camaro because well you'll see why when we take a look, closer look but it's a long jeans heritage 1973 chronograph and this one's from 2018 a wonderful piece so let's take a closer look now on to this long jeans heritage 1973 chronograph uh, which i call the longines camaro and you can totally see why now this is based on a vintage model which looked like this um, but obviously quite a few brands at the time were definitely following that camaro hype uh, from Hoyer because it just went incredibly well for them and rightfully so you know it's a great design uh, I won't bore you with the reference to this one it's quite a long reference you can see that on the website um, but what you see right there is this gorgeous white dial with black 
contrasting sub dials. The 12 hour dial at the bottom is also in white. It sort of adds that contrast, gives you the extra complication, but almost makes it look like a bi-compax chrono with just two registers, which is quite interesting. Date over there, as you can see, and the hands are not black in certain lights. They look black because they are mirror finished. Uh, they are mirror polished steel. So in certain lights, they go black. In certain lights, they look uh, really highly polished steel, as you can see, which is quite nice. I think it's a nice little touch. Uh, let's start the chronograph. You can see that big chronograph second hand uh, right there, which is very impressive. Probably one of the thickest chronograph hands I've seen. Um, this one is from January 2018 with its box and paperwork. And as we flip it over, you'll see an exhibition case back featuring an automatic Longines caliber L688 and a very nicely decorated simple movement, um, which is wonderful. And as we stop and reset, you can see that nice snap back. Just compared on its original strap with its original buckle, it has been lightly worn as you can see, and the watch in general has been worn. There are a couple of hairline scratches. Um, it's all polished sides, so of course you can see that more on some of the polished surfaces, but in general it's in pretty good condition. You can't really go wrong, especially considering this watch is approaching five years old, uh, or is over five years old actually, slowly approaching six years old, which is crazy how quick time has gone. 2018 feels like yesterday to me, but let's show this one on wrist and tall dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Again, this is where it shines. It just sits very nicely. It's definitely a modern proportion compared to the vintage, but it wears really nicely and it looks fantastic. So what you're looking at is 40 mil by 48 mil look to look, 14 mil on the thickness and 20 mil at the look. So you could totally swap this out. A nice brown strap would look pretty good or a black suede, but to be honest, this strap pairing works perfectly. So go check it out on the website today. From there to another Halios. Uh, this is the Halios C4 2 in dark blue is very very dark blue in most lights it looks black and then occasionally you catch it and that blue becomes apparent really gorgeous watch let's take a closer look now on to the halios c4 a fantastic model i've been fortunate to have have, have owned and uh, sold multiple different references of the c4 but this is the c4 2 in abyss blue as it's called the blue is incredibly dark and in often lights looks pure black but then when you catch it in the light it becomes this really dark blue which is very very mesmerizing. You have the beautiful blue on the bezel as well, which is inlay with uh, lum luminous material, as you can see. So it all glows very nicely. Um, and this one is from February 2018 with its box and paperwork. It comes paired on its original rubber strap with its Halios sign buckle. Um, and this is a very supple and soft uh, rubber strap. Very, very comfortable. As we flip it over, you can see a nice sign screw down case back. And uh, inside there is an automatic ETA 2824-2 very reliable and robust movement, so you've got no worries there. Nice screw down sign crown as well, and nice finishing to the case. Again, a worn watch, so you will see some hairline scratches here and there, but nothing major at all. This is one that can be worn and enjoyed straight out of the box. So let's show it on wrist and tour dimensions. And there we go, comfortably on my seven inch wrist. These always wear incredibly well. They're not small watches, they're not big watches either. They're, they're, they're little, I can't get my words out. They're basically the perfect proportion somewhere in between for most people. So this is 40.5 mil by 46.5 mil look to look, only 12 mil thick and 20 mil on the look. So again, endless options for swapping that out. But to be honest, that looks pretty damn good and it makes it proper wearable in all situations. So go check it out on the website today. And another watch I've not had in a little while, I went for a craze of having pretty much every Seiko Turtle you can imagine. At one point, I had about 10 different references in my personal collection, and this was always definitely up there with one of my favorites. This is the Seiko Prospects Ninja Turtle All Black, as it's called, and this one is in wonderful condition with its box and papers ready to go. So let's take a closer look. On to the Seiko Prospects Ninja Turtle. This was one of my favorites back when I was collecting turtles, and you can probably see why. The all black case, the black bezel, black dial, the slightly faux patina, which is this caramelized color, and the striking hands, it all works incredibly well, and paired on the black rubber bracelet, uh, rubber strap as well, which looks great. As we flip it over, you can see this one still has a sticker on the back. Um, this is the reference SRPC49K1, and inside is the automatic Seiko Caliber 4R36. And this one's from January 2018 with its box and paperwork. 
uh, and everything with it. So yeah, let's, uh, well, I was about to say, let's show it on wrist, but I've not really spoken about it. You've got a screw down crown, the all black case, which is in good condition. To be honest, I've very rarely seen these with any scratches. Um, however, they make these cases, they obviously do it very well and it's very resistant to wear, which is good because some black uh, sort of fades away very quickly. You end up with the steel showing through or the base metal and it doesn't look particularly that great. But this one is in very good condition. You can wear and enjoy this one. The rubber strap is nice as well. So let's show it on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. This is the reason or one of the reasons why I absolutely love the Seiko Turtle and still do to this day is how they wear on the wrist. These are big watches, but the look to look is super super short and it just hugs the wrist nicely uh, and yes I have a seven inch wrist but to be honest all the way down to like a six and a quarter I think you can get away with a Seiko Turtle. This is 44.5 mil or 45 mil depending on how you measure it by 47 mil lug to lug only 13 mil thick and 22 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap change in a breeze but to be honest the black rubber is what it's made to be on in my opinion so go check this one out on the website today now we're going through all the modern watches let's go on some vintage and we're going to start with this gorgeous amiga automatic seamaster deville yes double signed on the model ultra thin for the period for the automatic uh, and this one's from 1970 with its box papers and receipt which is incredible so let's take a closer look at this one a very special piece and one i'm excited to bring to you guys and girls this is a beautiful amiga seamaster deville automatic with a really nice silver dial which is developed to subtle patina as you can see as you can see stick hands and stick indices all original and looking fantastic um, but what makes this one quite special well first off it's the reference 165008 is double stamped seamaster and deville as you can see proudly stated um, but again what well, there's a few things that made this quite special you can see automatic and as we flip it over look how incredibly thin that is that is, um, that is seven mil thick, which is almost as thin as the strap. And that is automatic, which is just absolutely insane. So inside is the automatic Amiga Caliber 711, which is a movement they didn't make for a very long time. And it happened to be one of the thinnest calibers at the time, thinner than some of the manually wound calibers that Amiga were using, which is really impressive. Um, but this one's from January, uh, sorry, from August 1970, and it comes with its box, paperwork, and original receipts, which is incredible. Um, you don't often see that. Oftentimes, those kind of things are long gone and long lost, unfortunately, whereas this one still has it, which is absolutely fascinating. So as I say, August 1970, box papers, receipt, original Amiga crown, original Amiga crystal as well. When you catch it at the perfect point, you can see the Amiga logo etched into the crystal at the center. Um, this is as good as it gets, to be honest. I've paired it on a nice brown strap. Unfortunately, no original strap or buckle, but again, not uncommon. They would have been lost at some point along the way. Uh, case is definitely worn, has been enjoyed, but it hasn't seen a polish wheel in a very long time and is overall very, very good. Of course, we can have it polished up for you if you want, but to be honest, I'd say just enjoy it as it is. This is how it's intended. So let's show on wrist and taut dimensions. And there we go on my seven inch wrist, incredibly thin and incredibly comfortable at 34 mil by 48.5 mil lug to lug. As I said, only seven mil thick, that is incredibly thin and 18 mil on the lug, so endless options. I think this pairing worked quite well with the sort of gold tone of the indices right there. So go check this one out on the website today. And I've left the best till last or at least my favorites. And I believe it's one of the most affordable in this drop, second to the Seiko. That is this insane Smith's Jump Power Digital Blue Dial. Um, for those of you that know me, you know I collect really funky 70s pieces and I've definitely accumulated a lot over the years, um, but I've decided to let go of a couple. So this is the first one to come and there will be another Smith's Jump Power later down the road. It's a gray dial, more traditional round case this is definitely the funkier of the two the other one's a bit more uh, versatile for most people although these are all funky watches so you gotta accept that but really cool watch so let's take a closer look at this one so as i said my favorite from this week's drop what you're looking at right here is a smith's digital jump power with the blue and silver dial and this absolutely insane case look at the shape of that case and the finish is all original as well. It is a base metal case with a stainless steel back. So on some of the parts of the polish, you can see some of the base metal um, has seen better days, but again, considering the age of this watch, 
Uh, this really isn't that bad and I think it's perfectly acceptable, especially considering it's the original finish, even has its original crystal, which has a couple of marks here and there, but overall is pretty damn good. Uh, as you can see, it's actually changing over as we speak, which is really cool. Um, but the reference to this one is 12635 and inside is an automatic AS caliber 2083. That's what makes this quite special. Oftentimes these were very terrible pin lever movements, whereas inside this is a very reliable and commonly used AS caliber, which is adapted for the digital display, as you can see. It even features a date at 12 o'clock. So definitely no cheap, uh, cheap out on the movement. And again, for it to be Smith's, it's highly unusual and not really something I've seen other than this one and another one that I own, which is coming to the website soon. So circa 1970s, no original box or paperwork, unfortunately, but a very, very cool watch. And as you can see, it's slowly moving over to the hours. Let's speed that up a bit and show you. So as we go, um, as you pull the crown out all the way and you go one way, that's the wrong way. As we go, uh, that's, oh no, that is the right way. So there we go. As you can see, there we go. Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, half nine, 10, and so on. That's how the jump hour works. And the date changes automatic at 12, uh, 12 p.m. obviously, but you can quick set the date as well. Obviously making sure you're not doing it between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. Uh, as with any watch. So always go past 12 and you'll see it either change over or not. You saw the date change over, so we know we're in a.m. So always go past um, as far as you can. And with these jump hours, always go clockwise. Don't go anti-clockwise because you can sometimes mess up um, Sorry, go anti-clockwise, as you can see as I'm changing, it's going forward. Don't change the time backwards is what I meant to say, uh, because sometimes you can mess up the movement, so always do it that way. But there you go, that's the watch, a very cool piece and a very interesting watch. Obviously a bit more delicate with the movement, so do keep that in mind, but that's why it comes with our warranty, it's been serviced, all that good stuff, but again, just be careful. So let's show on wrist and taut dimensions. And there we go, paired on my seven inch wrist. It's a big and funky watch and it wears super cool, super, super cool with that slanted case, slanted dial. It's all sat in there at a slight angle. Very interesting. I don't think you'll really see anything quite like this. So this is 40.5 mil by 42.5 mil look to look, 13 mil thick and 20 mil on the look. So endless options, but I think this pairing definitely looks best with the blue and blue. But go check it out on the website today before I change my mind and keep this in the collection. So there you have it guys and girls, 10 watches this week, some incredible pieces, two very different but very amazing vintage watches. It's kind of amazing having both in the same drop because they're both from the 70s or this one's from 1970, this is from the 70s. But the contrast between the two is so insane, it's crazy. So this is exactly what I love to do. I, as always, I say every week, I am working on bringing more vintage watches to the drops, um, but they take time, that's the only thing. With most vintage, you buy it, it needs a service, it needs uh, maybe a new crown, a new crystal, whatever it may be, so things take time. Whereas with modern watches, it's a lot more simple. Servicing is usually a lot more simple. Parts are a lot more simple if required. Um, so it's just easier for me to accumulate far more modern watches than it is to accumulate far more vintage watches, especially with the amount we bring every week. But trust me, there is multiple in repair, multiple coming soon. And uh, yeah, you'll be excited to see some of it. So there you go. Thank you all very much for watching. Uh, we'll see you all next Saturday for another 10 watches. And there's already some incredible watches in that, including talking about vintage, a very nice Breitling Navi timer, a Hamilton W10 military, a Rolex Oyster Precision that I just mentioned earlier, a really cool vintage uh, Tudor from the 50s in nine carat gold uh, with a cushion case, some very special stuff. So you'll see all of that next week. But until then, take care. We'll see you soon.